Hello, friends and adventurers, and welcome back to Sally Cat Plays Exile 2 Crystal Souls. In the last episode, we rescued some giant spider babies. Or the eggs, anyway. We got some pretty good loot for our trouble. In addition to the Red Empire Pass, we got a couple of good scrolls, magic arrows, some mediocre weapons and armor, and drakeskin boots for scorn. Being drakeskin, I was hoping that they might have some fire resistance, but it looks like they've just got good defense for no encumbrance. That's fine, too. You may notice also that my gold level has gone a little bit down. I have spent it not on training this time. But on mage and priest spells. I have all of the available level 4 spells now. So perhaps we will have some fun with that. Anyway, I mentioned last time that to continue exploring around some of the river area, we'll need a boat. Fortunately, we do still have enough gold left over for that. I carve them out of the cave wood myself, by hand. They're small, but they'll get you south just fine. Safest way to travel. This is true. We cannot be attacked by wandering monsters while we're on a boat. You get handed a deed. And instead of our boat being outside of town, we get to pick from one of these. Not your boat, apparently. The top one is it. Nothing up there but rocks. Nothing over here. Ah, something over here, though. Mysteriously, an Empire soldier met his demise here. He was quite young, and there are no marks on the body. The body was mostly stripped, but whoever did so left behind the soldier's bow. It's crude, but still usable. Okay. Seems to be all the extra goodies on this screen. But wait, there's more! Why do I get an unpleasant feeling from this? Swampy Cave. Okay, seems to be as advertised. We've got fire, we've got monster. Oof, we've got powerful magic monsters. A naga, apparently. Oh, I remember you now. Naga, or... S I was about to say snake-headed woman, but it's actually the opposite. It is a snake with the head of a woman who can cast flame strike on me. So what shall we do here? First, let's spread out a little. I really should have had more when do a group heal. It's fine, I saved. Naga is level 12, oh dear, has a lot of health, and a lot of magic points. Has way too many spell levels, and poison, paralyzing touch, and is re Im resistant or immune to everything except physical damage. Ow. 
Owie. Uh, one damage after being cursed. What to do, what to do. Ooh, I know, I can disease you. That should be fun. Thank you for killing off half of the summons that you just created. You know, I think I might need just need to come back to this fight later. But I'll keep going for now. I want to see how well I can do. This really feels like it calls for a major blessing, and I do not have that yet. Oh wait, didn't that say she was immune to poison? Ugh. Okay, doing decent damage when blessed. This might be doable at my level. Might. I actually got her. Okay, let's see if we can do a bit of cleanup on all the undeads you summoned. Better already. Not undead. It's a shade. What is it if not undead? Okay, maybe shades are more like magical constructs or some other weird sort of summon? I don't know. And of course, Cure Party does not remove disease. Lovely. Ah, uh, yet more? Ooh, treasure chamber. Ye. We shall see later if any of those are good. Uh, 
And yes, Simmerine, we will get your disease taken care of as soon as Morwen has more spell points. This could be a problem. Okay, no secret back door into the treasure room. That's all we can do on that little landmass. Please to stop dying. do a cure party. I cannot do a cleanse at the moment. Oh, but Simmerine's poison has worn off, so whatever. And now we can rest. Because fun fact, the game does not allow you to rest while poisoned or diseased. I guess it doesn't want you dying in your sleep. Hello. There is a crude cairn here, hurriedly built against the cave wall. When you move forward to investigate, a shadowy form begins to coalesce over it. Okay. It takes a little while, but eventually the mist coalesces into an insubstantial figure, a middle-aged man in clerical robes. When it is fully formed, it begins to speak. The words are halting, and you struggle to hear. Ambushed. Ogres. Secret tunnel. Couldn't get to boat. My god. Ashamed. Save me. Must be avenged. Ogres in Secret Valley. South. Will reward you. Help me. And with that, the challenge of communicating with you overwhelms him, and he disappears. Hmm. When you approach it again, nothing happens. So is he ashamed, or is his god ashamed of him for falling to ogres? Hmm. Meanwhile, we've got some sort of village here. Or hut, perhaps. Oh, it's a tiny slith fort. And wouldn't you know it, it's full of sliths. This is the entry gate to a truly shoddily built fort. It is mainly rocks precariously stacked on one another, and the outer walls are held up by the buildings inside. Whoever built this place was not skilled in the least. They do, however, look like they might be skilled at stabbing people with spears. So let's curse and slow them. Show off an ice bolt. I love that new ice bolt sound effect. And yes, I say new as if this game isn't more than 20 years old. Ooh, 
Ooh, snap, that guy with the red light on his hand is a mage. Sorry, Kazol. Found another one. Found a priest as well. Yes, red is mage, green is priest. I'm glad they differentiated the two of them in this game. I thought Ice Bolt would be a lot more effective than that. Telamine has no priest skill, so it's flame or nothing. Well, that worked. This building was clearly abandoned when it was almost finished. It looks ready to collapse in on itself at any moment. Let's get out of there then. Oh, great. You've summoned help. What a fantastic opportunity to bring in some spellcasters. Maybe I will pick up the buckler. Last one I found was magic. I swear I remember this tiny slith fort being a bit tougher when I played through it the first few times as a kid. Then again, I'm strong enough to take on a naga, so what do I know? A wall collapses on you. Ow. And again. Oh. Probably shouldn't have done that last one. You seem a little less cursed than everybody else. Where'd you come from? <sighs> OK, 
Okay, apparently there's a mage over there. Ooh, that was a good one. Box with nothing in it. How rude. This door is locked. Maybe if it's a shoddily built fort, I can just kick the door open. Nice. And this guy is friendly. There is an unarmed slith sitting in this narrow cell. Its scales are pale, and lack the glossy sheen of normal slith scales. It looks at you nervously. Must be a prisoner. It realizes you aren't about to attack it. I am Akas As, humans. You strain to hear its soft, sibilant voice. The foul sliths here imprisoned me. I can now escape if you do not kill me. They are but brigands now. They should receive justice. These are renegade sliths, part of the army of foul sliths. When Sisthus was slain and his castle destroyed, most of his servants sued for peace. We do not all hate humans, but then some of them fled to keep killing and fighting. They caught me and were going to sacrifice me. I was to be sacrificed to Sisthus, the foul warlord the humans have slain. He nods. We Sliths are a people of justice, and he received his, as will we all. It stands, slowly, and bows to you. Now that my guards are dead, I will get away, back to my family and brood. Were it not for you, I would be sacrificed. Again, I thank you. Well, you are welcome there, sir. This statue is the only thing in this whole place not shoddily made. It is of a male slith, holding a huge two-tined spear. The words, Sisthus, are carved in the base of the statue. Offerings of fish have been placed before it. So... I'm pretty sure there's an unmarked special around here that's going to drop more stone on me in this room. Let's see if I can bypass. I cannot. Well, at least that one did no damage. Ooh, a slith spear. That might be pretty good in the hands of a slith character. Okay, I thought there might have been something else in here, but maybe I'm thinking of a different slith fort. Yeah, I think it was the uh, small slith fort in the previous game that had something valuable in a box in this corner here. This one has only trash. So 
This does connect back up with some of the spider area if we keep walking to the north. And I'm not hitting that special dot without resting. What are you, alchemy ingredients? This part of the swamp is frozen over. A thin sheet of ice covers everything. It's very interesting and very unusual. Before long, however, you find out why everything is so chilly. Ooh, more new enemies! Ice slimes and ice pudding! I see that one is darker, the other lighter. The dull one is the ice slime, and the bright one is the ice pudding. Mmm, pudding. Ice slime has icy touch, not a lot of health, immune to cold and poison. Ice pudding has a slightly higher level. Can create ice walls. Oh, that should be fun. Is immune to cold and only resistant to poison. Well, now I know who I need to kill first. And a fireball for the rest of you. Man, I want to learn Ice Wall. You search the area for the remains of victims of the puddings, but find only lizard skeletons and giant spider remains. No loot. Aww. Doesn't appear to be much more over here. Or is there? In this secret tunnel, there is a narrow cave entrance at the east end of this hidden valley. Poorly treated lizard skins and severed slith heads are scattered about. It stinks. You don't make it far into the cave before you find its owners. Hey, we found the ogres that spirit was talking about. Let's wreck them. Okay, we do have an ogre mage. That's potentially troubling. Almost as troubling as the low damage that fireball did. Jeez, Scorn. I do not like you, sir. You need to die soon. Okay, Ogre Mage is magic resistant, immune to cold, that's interesting, and poison resistant. And gets fifth level mage spells. I am jealous. Oh, 
Oh, geez, that one hurt. Heels. Oh, darn it. Please tell me I saved recently. Close enough. Hey, I spared myself getting poisoned that time. Monster too close? Where? Eh. We'll just rest over here, then. This time, let's try to kill the Ogre Mage a little faster. Or better yet, slow everyone who's not me. It's a scripted encounter. I knew he'd be there. So I talked about wanting to learn a wall of ice. I already did. I forgot. Much better. Most of the ogre's equipment is unusable. You do, however, find a few iron ingots in the back of the cave. They're worth some gold. Nice. So, once we make our way back to the boat, we can tell that dead guy we've avenged him. But first, what's over here? I do not find a barrier blocking me. We do find a heavy stone door, set rather incongruously in the cave wall. Letters suddenly appear in a tracery of flame on the smooth surface of the door. They spell a simple, grim word. Password? What password? The flaming letters disappear, but the door doesn't open. Huh. How mysterious. Hmm. This seems likely to end in violence. Maybe I should rest first. At the end of this dead end, you find a barricade, guarded by a very jumpy, isolated, and well-armed garrison of Empire soldiers. You eye each other nervously for a few minutes. Then one of them yells, You don't bug us, we won't bug you. Trying to talk to them, when you move to approach, several arrows thunk in the ground around you. The soldiers don't seem in the mood to chat. Mm-hmm. Well... Can we really allow a nest of Empire soldiers to be dug in where they could theoretically access Fort Draco and Formolo? With maddened howls, you charge the barricade. The invaders of your homeland pepper you with arrows and then close for the attack. I'm sure this isn't above our level at all.
So we've got archers, other better archers, evil acolytes, and I do not like the mage in the back here. I do like this target setup. Finally, a good roll on fireball damage from my side. Let's do sticks to snakes and play around with some summoning. Ooh, I get to target. I think one of my serpents killed a guy. Nice. Empire Mage appears to be magic resistant. Don't much care for that. Yeah, I think I'm going to win this one now. Now that is the kind of damage that Ice Bolt is supposed to do. Lots of goodies. Are they good goodies? Mm, they might be okay. Beyond the barricade, you find all the soldiers' stuff. You root through the armor, spare weapons, rations and such, and take what you can carry. Ooh. So we got more gold, maybe some more food. We got medium healing potion, arrows, and a shield. All dead-end passages must be investigated for secrets. This small cavern has a natural spring in it, which has helped bring here a wide variety of life. There's tall mushrooms, fungus, bats, lizards, all the flora and fauna of exile. To the south, you see a large valley. Okay then. What is this? Little Veil. We have found somebody's house, apparently? Perhaps, maybe? The crude wooden sign reads, Waldby's Bazaar. You are at the entrance to a large stone hut, filled with a huge assortment of various items. Shards of pottery, wands, flasks, knives, skulls, swords, and everything else imaginable are jumbled together in huge, awkward heaps. I think I like this place. You meet a small, dapper man with carefully tended black hair and an elegant mustache. He watches you with interest. He nods. I am Waldby. He grins. Why, I'm a salesman. What else? Okay, what's a salesman doing out in the middle of nowhere? 
Believe it or not, this is my lovely shop. Or will be until the Empire comes. Any day now, I expect to hear news of Empire troops coming. Hey, good news, did you a favor just now? When that happens, I'm ready to be out of here within the hour. I'm not interested in suicide. Which is what I would be committing if I tried to defend my shop against the Empire. Yep, not everybody can be badass adventurers like us. Remote, I know, but this is where I can afford to be. From here, I scavenge items as best I can. Then I sell them. Purchase something? Ah, let's see what you got. Crude buckler, stone axe, iron buckler, weak poison, medium speed potion. And eh, nothing all that great this time. Can I sell things to you? I can. No, hitting the sell button just brings up the regular buying stuff menu. Aw. So yeah, while to be here is our random junk item shop. Every now and then we can stop in, his inventory will change. He might have something good, he might have complete crap. I'm a little disappointed that he won't identify and buy items from me. Oh, here's a barrier. Like, uh, like that one guy, Brantford, in the Tower of the Magi. And that is all we can do with this area for now. Lousy barriers. Where'd we leave the boat? There it is. You use your sharp deductive reasoning abilities to determine that this ledge is home to a large colony of giant lizards. It isn't too hard to figure out. A whole bunch of them are trying to eat you. I'm just gonna skip over this one. Lizard fights aren't that interesting anymore. All done. We should go tell that guy that we fought the ogres for him. You approach the cairn, and the shade again appears. This time, it takes much less time to form, and is much more substantial. Thank you, warriors. My blood has been paid for with theirs, and I may rejoin my warrior brothers beyond. And now, your reward. The ghost begins to pray. The prayer begins with strange words, uttered in a low, guttural voice, and works up to something halfway between a chant and a bestial scream. With that, the ghost begins to fade. As he does, he says, I have prayed for you. You now have an honorable place in the afterlife. Thank you. And he is gone. And there was much rejoicing. Yay. I'm going to not deal with you Nephilim today. And nothing down this little passage here. But we have more thoroughly explored one more square of the overworld map. So I think I'll call it here and see you guys next time. Have a good one, everybody.